We're ready. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Perfect. I pledge Morning, everyone, and welcome to the December 5th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. Madam Clerk, the first item, please. First item, item one, proclamations, presentations. Number one, recognition of Lisa Fawn Steele Garrison, 2013 4-H National Volunteer of the Year. And if you would read the proclamation, that would be great. Whereas, Lisa Fawn Steele Garrison has been honored by the National 4-H Council as the 2013 National Volunteer of the Year, for her exceptional commitment and contributions to 4-H and the community. And whereas, Lisa has al was also named the 2012 North Central Region Salute to Excellence 4-H Volunteer of the Year. And whereas, Lisa has served as the Auburn 4-H Club leader since 2007, including serving as photogra or phot photograph project leader and horticulture project leader, among many other positions. And whereas, Lisa has also served as secretary, vice president, and president for the Shawnee County Extension Board. And whereas, in addition to her involvement and leadership in so many 4-H activities, Lisa has been a leader for the local Adopt-a-School program at the Williams Magnet Grade School, where she helped to upgrade the class rainforest, created landscaped school grounds, read to students, co coordinated the Colgate Free Dental Checkup program, and supported the NASA space mission from 2009 through 2012. And whereas, Lisa has been a leader of the Chris Christmas Adopt-A-Family program, supporting up to 12 families a year for the past five years. And whereas, Lisa has also served as a volunteer at the Auburn Elementary School for the past four years. And whereas, Lisa's involvement in the 4-H community has been invaluable, and she has touched so many young lives through her guidance, love, and understanding. Now, therefore, the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Shawnee, Kansas, does hereby recognize Lisa Fennin Steel Garrison for her endless hours of volunteer service to 4-H and the community and commends her leadership and a commitment to children in Shawnee County. Lisa, I know you're always a familiar face at 4-H activities, but this is quite a, the recognition, and we're so glad that Commissioner Cook brought it to our attention, and uh, we're very pleased to um, recognize you today. Do you Thank have you. Any, any comments? I'll just say it's a beautiful community. There are wonderful kids in our community, and it's a bright future. It means that we have a bright future, and it's an honor to be part of a community that wraps themselves around both individuals who are in need, and we do that as a group and a community, and we really strive to find the talent and stretch youth in, the, in, our, in our communities, not just in sports, <coughs> but in every facet of everything that they have passion about. And anything that you can do to like that talent in someone that you know that's young will only produce the leaders of tomorrow that we all strive for. So it's an honor to help with that. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Lisa, I just wanted to say thank you very much for everything you do in Shawnee County. And uh, as I had a chance to go to the award ceremony and here at the national awards, I wanted to make sure that you know this is recognized. This is quite an achievement, not just for you, but for Shawnee County. Mm -hmm. sure. And it shows our 4-H program and everything that happens within the community. And so thank you very much for everything you do. It's an honor. Thank you. Get you a copy of that as well, or get her the original. Do you need to make a copy for no. anything? Okay. okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks for being here this morning as well. <laughs> Item two, unfinished business. Number one, consider approval of home rule resolution number HR 2013-7, providing for the amendment of the zoning regulations of Shawnee County, Kansas, to incorporate a new provision governing special events. And I'm looking for Barry Beagle, third row. Are there any questions for Barry? Uh, this is the second reading. Are there any questions? 
Madam Chair, if yes. I may, if Mr. Beagle. Thank you, Mr. Beagle. Uh, two questions that have been posed to me, and I'll pass on to you for consideration. The first is, when considering the setback, which is what we had discussed on Monday, uh, what consideration, if any, was given as to a property line setback as opposed to a residence setback? Mostly it was always dealt with in terms of the property line setback. In order to make it uniform, it, it, this, the application of the setback requirement uniform amongst all the uh, <coughs> various types of events and activities that could take place. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't make any difference what the adjoining land use is. It just says that this is a minimum buffer that has to be maintained to separate the activities of the event from neighboring property. Okay. And then, so there really had not been any consideration as to if the house is sitting right on the property line as opposed to the house being 30, 50, 80 feet into the property. Well, and this is where I want to make sure that the commission understands that there's, there's 12 different performance standards and we're just focusing on one. Mm -hmm. That one standard in and of itself was not to be the be-all to end-all in terms of mitigating all the potential impacts associated with the special event. What we tried to do was, was to incorporate a minimum setback that would apply regardless of the size of the event or the type of the event and make sure that we had at least a minimum open space buffer between those activities and that of neighboring property, whether it's resident, residentially occupied or, or otherwise. So it's to be considered in part and parcel with all the other performance standards that are contained in the draft regulation. Okay. And the second question that had been posed to me is that when we have events that occur within rural Shawnee County, there might be events that occur that are part of a township. We have special event fees that are being paid to the county for those special events to be put on, but is there any consideration as to the costs that are being passed on to the townships, whether it's gravel or other wear and tear that they might be maintaining on the roads? Well. With, uh, with regard to the evaluation process, uh, all the principal parties are notified of, of the request and they have the opportunity for review and comment. And so if there are any issues related to the road condition, then that would be a factor that would have to be taken into consideration of whether to grant the special event or not. I mean, hypothetically, if we were talking about an event that occurred in rural Shawnee County that we're considering in excess of 400 people, there could be significant uh, consequences to the gravel roads in or around that, then that cost is passed off to the township of which they had no fees received from it. I understand that and that's what I'm saying that as part of the evaluation process all the principal parties would be notified of the request and given the opportunity for review and comment. And if traffic congestion or road conditions are, is considered or identified to be a major significant factor then that would weigh in on whether to grant the special event or not. Any further questions? Anyone wanting to speak on this item? I will just close. Yes, Go ahead and come on up to the podium. Also at this time we need to disclose ex parte um, communications. Uh, received uh, emails and had meetings with uh, Mr. Ed Peck and then also emails from um, the Keegans <coughs> and uh, some echoes, and I believe that's all. And I think that was to the commission as a whole. Yes, I received the same email correspondence and did have uh, a personal meeting with Mr. Peck. Likewise, I had received the same emails and had a meeting with Mr. Peck. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Please state your name and then make your comments. Perry Keegan. Uh, as as to as to Mr. Cook's questions to, to Mr. Beagle. Um, just to touch on that, I know fees to the township, I know uh, if the property's in that township, I know taxes on, are paid that go to the township, um, whether that's substantial enough or not to make, a, make, a, make an issue as to gravel road or to whatever repairs or damages could be done by going on the, on the roads, I don't know, but there are taxes that are paid. Um, the one thing that that's a little disturbing is that that I've been to all of the meetings and was a member of the working group, and and I want the system to succeed. I don't want it to fail. We spent a lot of time 
uh, with Mr. Beagle's staff and the, 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 the zoning commissioners, and we went back and forth, and, you know, the, the topic of setback was brought up several times. Um, it was pointed out by a couple of different planning commissioners that it doesn't really make a ma that much difference if it's zero to 50 feet or 30 to 50 feet concerning light or noise, whatever the issues may be for, for, the, for, the, for the need of the setback. Um, we, we, we went through this several different times and it was voted unanimously five to zero to, to continue, so I really don't know. It's a little puzzling why it's being revisited and this whole thing um, I hope most of the people can see the forest for the trees and the trees in spite of the forest. This, uh, this has come down to a 20 feet. Um, th this whole thing now is, is down to, 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 to 20 feet, which doesn't seem to be relevant one way or the other uh, in, the, in the big picture. Um, you know, I, I had brought up before and um, had mentioned that, that there's already something in place, the Home Rule Resolution, the HR, 2006-11 for the fireworks stands, which seems to seems to be somewhat sensible when a fireworks stand can be 10 feet from a property line or 50 feet from a dwelling. Um, the fireworks stands up a, approximately the same amount of time that that a special use, a special um, that a, that an event would be going on, be taking place. Um, fireworks, I mean, there could be hundreds of hundreds of pounds or more of explosives um, 50 feet away from a dwelling. That seems to make, to make sense. Um, to be 30 feet away or 50 feet away or 100 feet away from property that has no residence, that has, no, that has nothing on it, that's, that's, no, that's just um, either row crops or just vacant property, seems to be, seems a little confusing. Um, the, the topic or the, the subject was brought up that, well, that my question to Mr. Beagle was, well, what, what, why do we need this 30-foot setback? Why do we need a setback? And I said, is it for safety vehicles? And, and it, it was brought up, well, if somebody needs, you know, and talking to the, the, uh, the, the sheriff's department, they said egress and ingress, case of emergency. Well, if there's a wooded area, a landowner's not going to go back there and take out the first 30 feet around their whole property, that's, that's just a, 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 huge, a huge undertaking. And, and Mr. Beagle said that that's not how that's set up. It's, it's just a, some sort of buffer against the property line. And still, I think if somebody has the property, they should be able to use all their property. On, on 160 acres, if 50 feet, that's, that's over 17 acres that you're not being able to use. If some person is working with 10 acres and they have a 50-foot setback, even a 30-foot setback, that doesn't leave them a, a lot of area to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to put on their event. Um, I, I would just want somebody to, I guess, maybe explain to me why, why it would be, what the benefit of, of, of having it over 30 feet would be. Um, and, and again, I want this system to work. Uh, we spent a lot of time going in these working groups. Mr. Beagle spent a lot of time, all the other um, uh, commissioners that were there, the, the, the zoning people, um, and we voted five to zero. Oh, five, five. They voted five to zero unanimously to to move on. So um, I want the system to work, and I really don't understand why it can't, why it shouldn't just be where it's at at thirty feet, and and if not, I think it should be ten feet and fifty feet if there is a, a dwelling there. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I yes. may. Yes, question I, from Mr. King. Yes. Just, um, you attended the meetings on the resolution through the working groups, yes? Y yes. Okay. Um, how would this impact the exchanging it from 50 to 30? Would that have an impact on anything that you're doing with the property or contemplating doing with the property? Y say that again. If, it, if, it if, if the setback was changed, from th actually from 30, 30 to 50. Okay, right. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, my particular thing, which, which this, uh, uh, you know, everybody says this special use permit thing wasn't about me, but the Capital Journal seems to make it about me. Everybody else seems to make it about me, but it's not supposed to be about me. And, and, and the property I have that is adjoining Mr. Peck's property, yeah, I have, I have trails on my property. 
and and in order if I were to have an off-road event there I would have to move probably four or five miles worth of trails in about 10 feet which to me seems doesn't seem to make a lot of sense and and I and I I know that Mr. Beagle is going to bear the burden when and if I'm able to have an off-road event and he gets some sort of phone call or visit from, from Mr. Peck um, and, and pictures and then he's going to be put on the spot well was it 29 feet or was it 31 feet and then whoops you're, you were 29 feet here somebody's handlebar was, was an inch over and then Mr. Beagle's going to go sorry Perry I'm going to charge you a $500 fine <coughs> so that really puts a burden on on the enforcement part of the planning department so yeah to answer your question yeah and, and I don't really understand why, you know, if, if it's not going to make a difference between noise and, and any kind of lighting. Um, I think the main issue is, is uh, just somebody being that close to the property. It's going to make a big difference to me, yeah. The second question I had was, under this resolution, you would only be permitted to put on two events per year. Yeah, just two. And how would that impact what you're doing, if any? As far as the setback? No, the, the, the changing it from to where you're only allowed to put on two events per year. Is that going to have any impact on anything that you're currently doing with the trails? Uh, I, guess, I guess I don't understand the question. I mean, I can only put, as, as proposed, you can only put on two events. Uh, I mean, other than having the events, it's not going to really, I mean, affect me if I'm, okay. I mean, I don't. So that, that part's not going to happen, I mean, because when we're talking about this rule and we're talking about the properties, we're talking about really properties that are only going to be impacted very, very limited throughout the year, twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's a lot of work for me to go and, and, and redo four or five miles worth of trail to, to do that. Um, when, uh, if I'm not having an event and, and, and I go out there and ride, I can ride wherever I want inside my property. Um, but it, 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 it is only two events a year, I mean, as proposed. Yeah, of course. Uh, but you can have two more dissimilar events, if I understand the, the uh, resolution, and those events can last four days. Is that correct, Mr. Beagle? That's correct. Yeah. So, uh, you're not just talking about two events, you're really talking about four events, you're not talking about an afternoon or a day, you're talking about potentially 10 or 12 days during the year, just to make sure we've got clarification there. So, but again, then you, those good. events have to go through performance standards, and depending on what level, a certain uh, review and that sort of thing um, as well. So. so 10 or 12 days out of 365, okay. okay. Um, right. And really, this shouldn't be about me, this should be <coughs> about the county. Mm -hmm. That's right. And 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 mm -hmm. I don't want everybody to get disillusioned any more than what people seem to be. This this should be about the county, not one individual, not not Mr. Peck, and and his his agenda, and and really not mine. It should be about the county, okay. and everybody else should be taken into consideration on this. And it it's it's burdened enough if somebody wants to go to jump through all these hoops, go through this whole process. Mm -hmm to try to have an event and try to bring some people into this community um, and then not be able to use all of the property uh, and then be restricted even further for things that, that don't really seem to make sense to me. Um, 50 feet, 30 feet, 10 feet, why can't you go right up to your property line? Okay. So if you'd had your brothers, it'd be no setback whatsoever. Uh, yeah. If I understand you correctly, you're saying, yes. yeah. why have any? Well, I, I understand from Mr. Beagle's aspect about where there's parking and where people are going to congregate and where the, the restrooms are and where right. people are. I, I totally understand that. And, and But if you're on 160 acres and you're four miles back in the woods, I, 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 yeah, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm too close to it. Um, okay. if, if somebody gets injured, there's a way to get there and... and on, a, on some sort of vehicle, ATV or a truck or whatever, to get that person out of there. So it's not, um, it, yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you for your comments. Any further comments? <clears throat>
Commissioners, if I may, Rich Eckert, County Counselor, I'm not arguing in favor of 30 or 50. So for the next comments, please understand, I'm not arguing one way or the other. But there, there are two things I would like to say. Number one, there are a lot of property parcels in this county that have 200 feet of frontage and then three acres deep, as I like to say. And a 50-foot frontage pretty much covers 50% of those properties. And I'm one who, I live on one. My, I'm just a little bit over 200 feet and I'm seven and a half acres deep. So you're limiting half of the property. So just think about that when you do this. But the one part that is, I think, even more important is um, it's very easy to set a hard rule and then you live by it. But hard rules sometimes ignore common sense. And I think here we should maybe allow Barry to have a little discretion on the setback. And again, I'll use my property as an example why. My parcel runs east-west, so I'm, I'm long going east-west. To my north, I have a 160-acre farm that nobody lives on. To my uh, south, I have a very nice neighbor that I, I like very much, and I will never do anything to tick him off. Uh, but if you have a 50-foot setback line, if I'm having an event, you've actually pushed that event 50 feet closer to my south neighbor than we have to. We could push my event back up to my north fence line where nobody lives, and I'm actually saving my neighbor another 50 feet. So I think we ought to give Mr. Beagle, he might scowl at me for the suggestion, a bit of discretion when he's doing these uh, events on where these setback lines are. Because sometimes it would make sense to not have a setback if there's no neighbor in one direction, but you do have a neighbor in the other. So just think about that. Thank you. Mr. Peck, before you make your comments, can we address with Barry? I'm going to go back to the working groups again because they've spent a good deal of time on this resolution. Was there discussion about setback and, and giving some flexibility, or was just the amount, this 30 and 50, was that what was focused on? Well, there was discussion about the setback requirement, and really the, the only two principal parties that were arguing that at the time, I think, was Mr. Keegan and, and Mr. Peck. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, in the view of the, of the Planning Commission, they felt that this was an appropriate standard to have. Mm -hmm. Pick a number, 30, 50 feet, 20 feet. They felt that some kind of setback was appropriate, considering the activity level, scope of activity associated with an event, in relation to neighboring property, they thought some kind of minimum setback was appropriate. <clears throat> and so, um, yes, there was, there was consideration by that. The initial draft uh, that was prepared by staff and submitted to the Planning Commission for public hearing on May 13th of this year contained a 50-foot uh, setback. And then as a result of going through the public hearing processes, for which we had two, and then going through the two working groups and then the two subcommittee meetings, it was at the last subcommittee meeting that they felt that uh, it would be appropriate to go ahead and reduce uh, the required setback from 50 to 30 feet. Um, because again, we're still maintaining a, a minimum open space buffer to neighboring property, but the 30 foot requirement is actually more consistent with the traditional setbacks of what we find within the unincorporated <coughs> area. And therefore, they felt that, that would be an appropriate uh, type of uh, standard to set. And again, it, it also got to the argument of, well, how much land area are we consuming or taking out of uh, the use of mm -hmm. a virtue of, fi of a 50-foot setback compared to a 30-foot setback? So in the permit procedure, mm -hmm. if you uh, requested or, or um, more setback than just the minimum, you could do that as part of the permit. Well, the, I mean, the, that's an option. The performance standards are hard and fast criteria. Mm -hmm and they're intended to be applied that way. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you so know, there we're, we're trying to take, you know, surprises mm -hmm. out of the equation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. you know, the performance standard is the per performance standard. So unless we incorporate some other kind of flexibility mechanism into it, as uh, Rich is suggesting, you know, that, that would be the standard that would have to be met. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Archer. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. But, but Mr. Beagle, you're going to have a lot of input on how these uh, occur. From what I recall, there's a, a pre-planning conference, there's maps, there's integration with the sheriff's office, public health, public works, and so on and so forth. So 
really the setback line is one of the few things mm -hmm. that we really do have control over at this point because you have a lot of discretion in the mapping uh, facilities that are going to be available and the interaction with the different uh, groups like I say law enforcement uh, townships public works and so on is that is that correct well that yeah that is true okay. um, <clears throat> but I mean the, the performance standards in and of themselves with the requirement for parking that has to be on site right. it can't be on the street you know with regard to signage and so forth those are very hard and fast numbers you know that, that are put in there and so yes we would have some discretion in the evaluation of the site plan in, per se if we can maybe arrange for the event to take place in a different configuration or something like that so as to minimize the extent of impact yes but like say otherwise the performance standards in and of themselves are hard and fast um, criteria that have to be met but but to a large extent you're going to be working with the event organizer managing uh, monitoring uh, and working with the other uh, entities that are involved that is with, correct. with the event so. that's correct okay thank that's you Madam Chair. But regardless of the adoption or not adoption of this resolution mr. Beagle if a person owns a ATV or off-road biking trail on their property they could by their own accord ride the trails all day long and if they had a private guest they and their private guest or guests plural could ride those trails all day long and there is that would not be part of this resolution that is correct so really the only thing that we're really talking about is where it is open to the public correct and so if a neighbor says I do not like listening to off-road bikes all day long there's little that they could do about that until such time as it's open to the public correct yeah I mean that's a completely separate issue mm -hmm. and then if you if the county wants to adopt other nuisance criteria governing those types of things then that would be something totally independent of, of what this is but that's not what's before us today that is no. correct that is correct and so really we're not solving all the world's problems today <laughs> Thank goodness, no. <laughs> Only on 160 pages. <laughs> I was going to say, do we ever? <laughs> I want to make sure that you appreciated the process. That yeah. Went into this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there has been a great deal of time invested mm -hmm. in this by your staff and, and other members of the Planning Commission and from the public as well. Yes, so. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mr. Peck, did you have a comment? I brought this setback <coughs> issue to the uh, commissioner's attention. The, the trails that are on this property, Mr. Keegan's property right now, <coughs> were placed there uh, prior to anything that was done two or three years ago. It, folks just had the property, came out, made their trails wherever they wanted to make them. And at the present time, there are trails within 10 feet. I'm guessing 10 feet because I don't go on the property, but I can see it from the roadway or from my fence line that there's a trail that goes through there. By moving these trails deeper into the woods, it's going to have less impact noise on, on the noise. It's going to have less impact on the noise. And that's where this property is. And these, these, um, this area that, that the trails are on, it, it's full of ravines and woods. And you know, I'm not a biker, so I don't understand and appreciate it probably. But what I'm trying to do is get more separation from the property deeper into the woods so it would have less of a noise impact. Now, that's point number one. Point number two is that, <clears throat> yes, uh, if you own property and you invite your buddies over to come and go biking with you, that's one thing. But what I'm, what, well, the neighbors, the couple of the neighbors and myself, what we're hearing is is a constant riding and it's it's if you invite your guest over and that's what kind of the the document says that it is for guests that you might invite privately to come in and ride with you but that's not what is happening what's happening is that apparently mr keegan has given permission to his friends whoever it might be to come in go use it right on my property that's fine that doesn't seem like that that follows along with the document that was proposed and passed now i understand private use of property is one thing but just to give people permission to come in and ride on that property continuously 
if they move the trails back, it'll have less impact. So that's what I'm really going for. Third point I want to make is that <clears throat> Mr. Keegan pointed out, well, you know, I don't see what the impact would be. Mr. Keegan doesn't live there. Mr. Keegan lives in Olathe. So he can give his friends permission to come up. He's not, he, it, there has no impact at all. But those of us who live there, it does impact us. And that's my main point. I wanted to see that the separation be greater than the 30 feet to lessen the impact on the, of the noise on the, on the neighboring properties. So, have any questions? I do not, commissioners. No. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, at this time, we'll close the public hearing. We'll make a motion to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? I'm sure, is that as presented? As presented, which is at the 30 feet. I'll second. A second by Commissioner Cook. Um, Question, Commissioner Archer. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a substitute motion that we uh, adopt resolution, but with the change to section 32.031C, that it does say 50, uh, 50 feet as far as the setback. And Mr. Peck, this has nothing to do with Mr. Keegan's ability to invite friends. Uh, to use the property. That's private property. That's that's the way things are. That's the way it is. Uh, this only deals with commercial events. And essentially, uh, events of, of at least 100 participants or more. And then there are more uh, strenuous requirements for 400 or more. But this is not going to solve that problem. I understand, sir. Uh, so it, I don't think it's about you. It's not about Mr. Keegan. It is about Shawnee County. I think it's more appropriate to have a 50-foot setback uh, in our resolution, so I'll make, make that substitute um, There motion. was a, a motion by um, Commissioner Bueller to adopt the resolution as is, and a second by Commissioner Cook. Um, I'm not inclined to change my mind. Um, I, I'm reading it as is, as the 30 feet, and my reason being um, property owners and their ability to use the full depth of their land and and also, it's gone through a, a process that's, this is the third or fourth public hearing, correct, Barry? Um, and uh, my guess is in years um, in the future, we'll be revisiting this. Um, this is a attempt to start um, regulating these type of events, and my guess is we'll revisit this, but this is a start. So. My Any second. further comments? My second remains. All those in favor of the motion say aye. This aye. is in the original motion. Yes, sir. No. Um, motion carries two to one. Commissioner Archer dissenting. Second. Yeah, Lack two to one. Uh, yes, well, there was already a motion on the table, so thank you. And Barry, thank you again to you and your staff yeah. and to everybody who participated. Appreciate it. Next item, please. Item three, consent agenda. Uh, there was one. Let's see if we can get to it. The corrected copy, and you have the corrected copy. There was one change in, uh, or a couple changes in uh, the consent agenda, item six. Uh, a difference in names of who was doing those classes, but I believe the clerk has the correct information, so, but it does not change the uh, amount. Are there questions on the consent agenda? Would the motion be uh, approve the consent agenda as, as amended. presented, as amended? Because okay. there's no, the contracts are the same, the dollar amounts the same, it was just that the memo was right. an error, so right. that, I don't and think that's a, the Oh, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Archer? Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Item four, new business, A, <coughs> County Clerk number one, consider all voucher payments. Madam Chair, this morning we have one set of vouchers dated December 4th, 2013, total amount of two million. $56,885.94. Uh, 
questions have been answered concerning the vouchers, and I make a motion to approve as presented. Thank you. There's a motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. The reason the amount is so large is we did not have vouchers on Monday. So. Okay. And our Jado payment is also That's contained. true. That's true. 550. And we also have, my staff has close to 750 checks that they have to process. <coughs> yeah, there's a lot included there. Huge staff. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. There are no correction orders today. <clears throat> and just in, and for an update on the correction orders, mm -hmm. my uh, staff is in uh, training right now for the new tax system. So the correction orders are not being processed. So you will at some point in time see a very large, and it's just <coughs> kind of the backlog. They're not, uh, just to let you know, they will be coming. Item A3, consider approval of resolution number 2013-184, authorizing the county clerk to cancel and reissue a check to Vanderbilt's number six in an amount of $343.93. And this check uh, was a uh, check on behalf of Public Works. The check had never been received, uh, was um, issued back in August, and we just uh, asked all the paperwork processed. The check had not gone through our bank, and um, they paid the $10, but did not ask for a reimbursement, so I'm just asking that you approve that. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to by cancel and reissue. Motion by Commissioner Second. Cook. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Item A4, consider approval of resolution numbers 2013-185 and 2013-186. Authorizing the issuance of 2014 cereal malt beverage licenses for the Shack Inc., located at 2842 Southeast 29th Street, in, which includes Sunday sales, and Pat's Pig Barbecue, located at 5900 South Topeka Boulevard, and that also includes Sunday sales. And these have met all of the criteria. Uh, everyone has been notified. Uh, KBI uh, Counselor's Office has reviewed, and uh, and the in-house inspections. The taxes are paid. Everything passed. Okay. Motion to approve the resolution. So motion to approve the resolution by Commissioner Archer. Second. And second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. Item B, coroner number one. Consider approval of request to replace duct work in the autopsy suite at a total cost of $14,663. Good morning, Commissioner. Don Coyne from the coroner's office. Hope you're all recovering from the turkey day slumber. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before you is a, a proposal to have some duck work, and that's like stuff where the air is carried, not little duckies. But anyways, <laughs> to have that repaired, um, it's, I don't know if it's considered a sole source pr uh, proposal or provider or an emergency request. Uh, the, the issue is, with our facility, it is maintained by the city. Mm -hmm. And the city contracts with, or has McElroy do their duck work and their heating and cooling and stuff. So I don't really have control <laughs> over who does that work and apparently the county doesn't either. The, actually the proposal went in front of the city. Okay. Um, and in the past what used to happen is the bill would go to the city and the city would then bill the county and then the county would bill us. <laughs> so we're trying to get that changed so it goes directly to us and prevents some of this. But that's why it's, it's again it's a single proposal that's presented because this is who we have to use. Um, our morgue is a negative uh, room or negative pressure room which means that it uh, runs on negative pressure and, and, and assures that any of the odors, good or bad, um, and any of the pathogens that may be airborne go through our filtration system as opposed to in our offices and throughout the rest of LEC. Over the years, what has happened is the uh, part of the ductwork that is above the ceiling has caved in, opening up joints. And that means that some of the air exchange is coming from above the ceiling and not from inside the morgue itself. So it's decreasing its ability to function, plus we've got some ductwork that has been caved in. Uh, the replacement ductwork is not just going to be simply putting in the same stuff we had before, but putting that in, embracing that uh, to withstand uh, the negative pressures. And as of today, we would have enough money, hopefully, um, in our current budget uh, to pay the entire amount of four. 15500 plus if it requires that much money um, without having to go to the, uh, the commission. We should have enough in there, our budget, unless something else happens that we're not aware of. <laughs> okay. 
Have you had an opportunity to talk with Betty Greiner, the financial administrator? It sounds like you may have had we, some conversation. Yeah, we kind of in like a little passing. We're okay. walking by. Okay. And at this point in time, see, this proposal was done a while ago, uh -huh. though I was not aware that it was even sent to the city. You know, we, were, we were waiting for it to come back to us, and we would call them on it. And they said, well, we don't have anything from the county. Well, no, it's not. It's through the city. Okay. <laughs> so okay. in passing, a while ago, we <laughs> <laughs> In passing, why can we kind of discuss this? And for this, for this issue, to just go proceed as, as we're as we're we're doing now. But for future uh, times, we'll work it out so that actually the proposals go through us. Okay. We pay directly as opposed to this goofy payment system. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> That's right, Betty Greiner, uh, financial administrator. I just wanted to add that we have discussed this, and. Um, if, it, if at the end of the year it, there is not sufficient funds to cover this in his budget, we also have funds in the capital outlay uh, fund that this would be, um, you know, something that could be, that would, <coughs> we want to say, be eligible for right. those funds. Right, Okay. All right. And I appreciate that, but we're, we're, we're hopefully we will be right there. Uh, we do have an ex I have a small amount of money that I keep aside in case. Uh, we have a, 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 or autopsies performed by an outside uh, person. Haven't had to use that, so I have that money available, and so we should be good. Okay. All right. Great questions. No. Commissioner Archer. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I enjoyed our conversation yesterday, oh, with so Dr. Plyman. It, uh, it was very helpful <laughs> to me, and, and uh, I want to publicly thank you for spending some time with me. Uh, and I did. I wrote Betty and asked her why we didn't have bids on this duct work and it's in the law enforcement center that's owned by the city and the city has an exclusive contract I, I like that exclusive contract with McElroy's to, to do this kind of work but my question for you is is how, is this going to impact your operation while this work is being performed that's my main concern nah. um, <laughs> talking to the person at the time I was looking at uh, what was going on up in the ceiling they hope that they can do that in one day. So we would be out of commission for one day. Now, they said they could do it on a Saturday or Sunday, which we currently have not been uh, running the, 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 auto, or the autopsy part of the facility during the weekends. But that would mean like, overtime pay for them. And uh, I, I don't think it's necessary to pay that. <laughs> we, can, we can effectively shut down the morgue for one day. We can, I can move things around, or I can work in the evenings. It's not, it's not a problem if that needs to be done. So for impact of us, no, it's, it's not going to be a problem. We can always work around that. I'd rather have the one day during the weekend, or during the weekday, than paying them during the weekend. That's a nice bonus, Christmas bonus, but, or holiday bonus, but I don't think we should do that. Thank you, Doctor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the request. It's a motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. A second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you so Good very to much. Good see you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. <laughs> Item C, District Court, number one, consider approval of request to hire a staff attorney at a total cost of $76,928 for salary and benefits. Good morning. Kathy Lynn Hart, Court Administration. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> 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 um, after much consideration and discussion amongst the judges, they have asked me to bring this to you for your consideration. Um, I have given you a list of the uh, responsibilities that if this were approved, the employee would be doing. If judges feel that it's extremely important to the efficient functioning um, and timely processing of a lot of motions and cases and getting orders done and those sorts of things. Do you have any questions? I don't have any questions, just comment. You've been kind of monitoring this to see if this is a position that's needed and you yeah, come to the conclusion. I, I, it does appear to be something that we're going to have mm -hmm. to find a way to do through mm -hmm. our budget and we do intend to do it with our mm -hmm. existing budget. We will not be asking for additional funding to do this and we're very well aware that means there's going to be some serious monitoring next year as we go through the year. I always worry about you know committing to something mm -hmm. like this early mm -hmm. in a budget year when you don't know what's coming. Yeah. So that will be on us to figure that out and, and work with you. And I've talked with um, Betty Greiner about this, and I visited with Jonathan Tumwell a little bit about what we need to do with the okay. position of the future. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. So just as we recap, 
Shawnee County has a long history of having a paid staff attorney who helps research, helps draft opinions. Uh, Shawnee County has a rich history of having complex litigation given that we are the county seat for the state capital. Uh, things come through the Shawnee County that a lot of other counties don't have. And with the staff attorney has always been paid by the Office of Judicial Administration through the state of Kansas. It has. And that's from the monies that's set aside by the legislature. Yes. And now our staff attorney went to work for the Office of Judicial Administration. That's correct. And now Office of Judicial Administration doesn't have the funds to replace that person here. <coughs> Correct. That has not been made a priority. Um, we have, I believe, as of today, 18 and a half empty positions that are funded through the state, this being one of them. And so we've waited, hoping that that would be able to move up on the list of priorities. Okay. And it has not to date. If Shawnee County does take on the responsibility of paying for this staff attorney, and I think that there's no question that we need to have that assistance and to have the court have a research staff attorney I don't I'm, I have no doubt as to that mm -hmm. are we acquiescence as a county our responsibility that's really the state's responsibilities I'm not sure I can answer that question okay. I mean obviously on the surface yes okay. um, that we're taking on a responsibility through our budget with the county mm -hmm. and through you all um, that we have not utilized in the past so, yes. <laughs> and, and is there going to still be a concerted effort to inform the Office of Judicial Administration that while Shawnee County is paying for this position now, it really is truly the responsibility of the state of Kansas? To the extent that that's possible, you know, when we've got 18 and a half positions vacant, we've also got to assess on a, on a constant basis caseloads for probation, challenges in the clerk's office, all of those things that have to be looked at all the time. And that's part of the challenge for them as well as us in terms of whether or not this position works its way up. Because this will have a direct impact on field team supervision, and those empty expenses, positions. And those empty positions, it'll have an impact on appointed counsel, it'll have an impact on the court's function, because this is less money that the court has available to it. This is true. This is true. Although this year we did very well with, with our budget and have ended the year with a considerable amount of money that we're going to be able to return to the county. I would love to have been able to encumber that from this year, but that's just not something, as Betty explained to me, that we can do because you can't encumber money from one year to carry over throughout the next year. Um, there are some other things we have taken care of this year now that should free up some money for next year that we know we can count on that. We looked at all that before we put together what we were going to ask for. Um, the thing you never know is how many juries you'll have. Um, there will be grand jury expenses again um, that we'll have to talk about. But it should not impact appointed counsel or contract right. attorneys and misdemeanor panel and the juvenile panels. Um, we've, we've factored that in as we were looking at what we would need to be expending. Now the next year may be a whole nother, you know, we're going to have to look at a variety of issues for our 2015 budget in order to build this in as well. But when we have the larger discussion mm -hmm. of the impact that happens in the legislature on local communities, this is one that we can directly point to it is that has impacted local communities. It is one thing, yes. One of many. <laughs> One of many, yeah, yeah. yes. And more to come, unfortunately, yeah. I'm yeah. afraid. That's yeah. right. More to come. Yep. Is there a motion on the item? Madam Chair, I reluctantly make the motion to approve the um, hiring of a staff attorney. And the reluctance is that it's a responsibility of the state that's not being covered, and, and the counties are now being forced to pick that up. And so I reluctantly make the motion to adopt that. It's a motion by Commissioner Cook. Um, and I'll second, but note that if we start doing that reluctantly, we're going to have a whole lot of <laughs> reluctant motions that we have to make, but I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye, opposed no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Thank you, Captain. Item D, corrections. Number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C-589-2013 
with Topeka Youth, Pro Youth Project to provide a work study program for offenders between the ages of 16 to 20 in amount of the $5,000. Good morning, Commissioners. Brian Cole, Department of Corrections. Uh, before you today is a, an approval of a continuation of a program that we had last year with the Topeka Youth Project. Uh, it did prove to be very valuable for our youth offenders and uh, being assessed and using uh, uh, the Topeka Youth Project to uh, help give our offenders uh, valuable uh, work skills to be able to get meaningful employment upon release. Uh, we anticipated about 48 inmates. Uh, through the Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative, we did see a little bit of a reduction in a population, so we didn't meet our threshold of 48. We did have about 22 uh, inmates that went through. Uh, we do anticipate there being more uh, next year, and also uh, with not, without any uh, increase in uh, the cost, uh, we're going to expand it to the adult uh, annex uh, for those uh, individuals as well. Uh, the money for this is uh, come from the inmate wellness account. This is a, uh, a totally uh, generated uh, revenue from the inmates they pay for themselves, uh, from the commissary they purchase, or for fees for programs that they purchase. So this is not, uh, so to say, budget budgeted money. This is money that comes from the inmates that they pay themselves, and a, a well-respected and anticipated program that the inmates and the juvenile offenders liked. Is Ms. Wong, is George yes. here today? No, I don't believe today? so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Questions? No, I, I, I had correspond, correspondence with Mr. Cole uh, on this program, and, and uh, I just wanted to applaud your efforts for pushing this through. Uh, Brian, good, good job. I think it's a, a great opportunity, and uh, I will uh, happily make a motion that we approve the contract. <laughs> I will, I will happily second it as well. It's a motion by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All those in favor of the motion say aye, oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. And Brian, I will say also thank you for your willingness to find funding for this because last year during the budget process, that's when all this came about. This fits very well yes, ma uh, in your department, mm -hmm. so we appreciate it. Does. it. Next item, please. Item B2, consider approval of a sole source purchase from Foley Equipment for load testing of all facility genera generators in the amount of $5,612.60. Brian Cole again. Um, during a uh, 2013 uh, fire marshal inspection, uh, they determined that the way we were testing the load on our uh, generator was not adequate. Uh, Basically, what we do is we shut down the whole facility, we turn off the power, we let the generators come up, and we run the facility off generator power for a certain amount of time to ensure that it can operate under the load that it's given. Uh, we've done this for years this way. Uh, for some reason, and I don't know what the change was, uh, uh, maybe it was discussed prior to my uh, serving as a director, I don't recall it, but anyway, they're saying that's not the proper way. Uh, what they're in instructing is, is that the generators need to have more an increased load tested for a certain amount of time to see if it will withstand that. Um, uh, Foley is the one who we do our, is a sole source for our generators and they're the ones that come in and test our generators. They have a device for $5,612 or $5 that can give the additional load increase to do this. Uh, uh, it is, uh, the fire marshals did give us a certain amount of time to get this tested and retested. Uh, so we have been in contact. We haven't done anything yet, but we do anticipate uh, working through uh, Major Phelps, who is our contract manager, uh, monitor, putting this in a regular maintenance agreement yearly at a reduced price. But this was something this year. Um, but I think the contract has already been done for the maintenance. Uh, I was a little uh, uh, shocked at the price of bringing in a device to put this on there, but uh, this was the information that uh, I was instructed through by our uh, uh, maintenance uh, division. Thank you, Brian. Questions? I'm approval of the request. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Item E, appraiser. Number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C590-2013 with ESRI for annual geographic information systems software maintenance in an amount of $25,300. Good morning. Mark Hickson, county appraiser. Hoping this is something that you can happily approve. It um, affects all of our departments that use GIS, which is just about all of them. It's the renewal of our annual uh, maintenance contract with them. Traditionally, over the years, we've been spending money from the land records committee fund to pay for this, but um, I've, uh, I've found that there is sufficient funding within my budget this year due to the fact that I had a position that uh, I did not fill that was budgeted for because it will be cut next year. So um, there, is, there is sufficient funding and I don't have to go to the land records committee fund for this uh, if, if you approve me spending it out of my budget. Okay, thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Commissioner? Sure. <coughs> now this is for the 2014 year, right? Yes. And so we're talking about for May AM expense now, that won't have an impact then as we go forward. You're not going to be coming back in 2014 for the same amount. Well, probably because it comes up every year about this time. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yes, I, I will be coming back next year. And no, it is not in my budget for next year either. So. Okay. But at that time, would you anticipate looking at the mm -hmm. same fund that you've used in the past to try and do that? Yes. I would hope so, uh, but we may have to be a little bit more resourceful in scrounging for funds next year. I, I just don't know. It's, it's an adventure. <laughs> Thank you. And Mr. Archer? And is it appropriate for this money to come from the Land, land Records Committee? It, it, yes. It's, it's always been considered a, a, an appropriate expenditure from that fund. But um, that fund is being uh, put upon for a lot of other big projects here lately. Mm -hmm. uh, one being, uh, I believe, Ms. Neosi has uh, a major project coming up, and then also our new uh, tax system, I think, is, is going to be utilizing some mm -hmm. of those funds. So I'm trying to take as much pressure. I've been the biggest user of that fund right. over the last few years, and I'm just trying to take a little pressure off of it to see if we can get, get, you know, leave more money in there. But the expenditure definitely fits within the appraiser's yes, responsibilities. I, just, I mm -hmm. mean, so as far as... Well, I'm, I'm responsible for, for GIS. You I, made me, my I, department, mm -hmm. responsible for mm -hmm. GIS. Mm -hmm. And I used to always budget for it. Mm -hmm. But because I would go to the Land Records Committee and request funding and it would get granted, that amount of funding eventually I just eliminated it. Well, maybe the county commissioner just started eliminating it from my budget because you're getting it somewhere else. So right. I didn't put it in there and I haven't put it in there for quite some time. But um, anyway, there is, I checked this morning, there is sufficient funding even after the last pay, payroll mm -hmm. came out of everybody's budgets. I still will end the, the year with about a $35,000 surplus. Thank you. Any further questions or a motion? Motion to approve the contract. There's a motion to approve the contract by Commissioner Cook. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. A motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item F, information technology. Number one, consider approval of request to pay invoice for additional amount of $1,701.72 for memory upgrades for the county network firewalls. Good morning, Commissioners. Pat O'Blander with the Information Technology Department. Um, back in October, uh, we were approved to purchase some memory upgrades for the uh, firewalls that we have uh, distributed throughout the county. Uh, we did get those uh, purchased and installed. Uh, about the same time, the vendor that uh, we send money to for annual maintenance for the firewalls, the software that we run on those, uh, calculated the, uh, the payment that we'd be making for the maintenance. Uh, they did not include the memory upgrades in that calculation. The timing was such that we purchased the memory upgrades at about the same time they were calculating the, uh, the maintenance. So uh, the, uh, 
maintenance need to actually, uh, we paid uh, less than what we were supposed to be paying for the configuration of the firewalls at that time. So this item right here is a catch up to that. So we're just adding an additional amount to the annual maintenance to cover the uh, memory upgrades that were put in. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, move for approval. Is there second. a second? Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Item F2. Consider authorization and execution of contract C591-2013 for renewal of maintenance and rights of use for five licenses uh, of SQL diagnos Diagnostic Manager for three years in the amount of $7,965.49. Uh, commissioners, uh, this software is what we use to monitor the uh, SQL Server installations that we have uh, a lot of different uh, critical systems running on. Uh, as we migrate a lot of our older uh, systems out of older technology, this is where we're moving things to. So it's very important that we carefully monitor that environment, and this is the software that we use to do that. We, we watch uh, for problems that occur, performance issues, and we use it in troubleshooting uh, problems as they occur. If you have any other questions, I'll answer those at this point. Okay. Thank you. Motion to approve the contract. Second. There's a motion by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Item F3, consider sole source purchase for printing of the certified mailers for the Sheriff's Office in the amount of $7,505. Commissioners, this item is for uh, printing and uh, production of the certified mailers that are used by the Sheriff's Office. Uh, this is a sole source uh, item because the mailers have a barcoding uh, implementation on them that the uh, company that's mm -hmm. producing them has the patent on. Okay. Motion to approve sole source purchase. There's a motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Item F4, consider authorization and execution of contract C-592-2013 with TSG for annual maintenance of hardware and software for the AS-400 and RS-6000 server platforms in the amount of $14,660.67. Commissioners, this, uh, this item is for the uh, annual maintenance for the hardware platforms that we currently run the New World system on. Uh, and a variety of other smaller things. This is the uh, records management system for the sheriff's office and also used by the uh, uh, Department of Corrections. Um, if you have any questions about that one, I'll uh, be happy to answer those. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner. Cook. As we move to the virtual platform, is this an expense that we can look at in the future years as being reduced or eliminated? Yes, it will certainly be reduced, if not eliminated, uh, at the conclusion of the migration of all of the systems from uh, current platforms onto the virtualization platform. Uh, I don't know exactly when that will occur, but uh, eventually we expect to see this uh, taper down to nothing. Okay. So this is a potentially, as the result of the virtualization, <coughs> we could be looking at saving, on this part at least, maybe $14,000 to $15,000. Correct. This is one of those items that would be positively impacted by the implementation of virtualization. <laughs> okay. It's but it's still necessary for now. Correct. And, and is it just for one year then? This is for one year. Okay. Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank, Thank you, you commissioners. Item G, Parks and Recreation. Number one, consider approval of the request to transfer the balance of a 2012 encumbrance to the Parks and Recreation Special Building Maintenance Fund and to create a project budget for the remainder of the of the public garden improvements in the total amount of $80,123. Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. Uh, late December of last year, a project budget was approved for uh, irrigation repairs to the uh, Ted Insley Gardens out of Lake Shawnee. An encumbrance was uh, uh, created at that time uh, at, at the suggestion or insistence of the audit finance director. Uh, she is suggesting the best way to handle this since the project is not completed is to create a separate budget and uh, put the, the remaining funds for that into that separate budget as we finish the project. Be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Thank you, John. Questions? I guess Commissioner? I do have a question. Uh, sure. This project was approved in, I think, December 17th of 2012. Yes. I wasn't an accomplished 
in 2013. Uh, it, it's about halfway done. They've, we've changed some vendors as we've gone along through the process. Uh, we also did not want the uh, pr project to hold up any of the activities that take place there in the summertime with weddings and those type of things. So that was some of the delay. Okay. So we are in the middle of this project. Yes. And, we, and there's really no going back. It's about a $160,000 project originally when we estimated it, and we're about $80,000 into it now. But there's no going back? No. Okay. Thank you. John. Yes, Chair. Yes. I would move to adopt, but I would also add that if there is any remainder, that it be put back into the general fund. So after the expenditure of the irrigation. Because we're moving it to the special to the special building maintenance fund, parks right. and recreation. Correct. So you're saying you want it. So if out of the eighty thousand one hundred and twenty-three dollars, if there is any remainder, that that then be placed back into the general fund. Uh, just uh, just a point of uh, uh, clarification: the building maintenance fund is completely funded with user fees. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If that, I don't know if that makes any difference or not at all. What we are suggesting is that we set up a job ledger for right. this project so that then we can pay those out of there. Uh, what I would like to do is if, if at the end of this uh, there are remaining funds that were not used, then that would go back to the Parks and Rec budget under the general fund okay. because it really uh, was not um, transferred under the user fee I don't want to say rules. <laughs> Does that make sense? So the action we're taking today, though, is to transfer the balance. To the transfer the balance. Into the, the building maintenance fund and to create a separate To, to create project a separate job budget. ledger. Um, at the, the, when the project is finished, any remaining funds would be transferred back to the general fund. It would go back to the parks and rec. <coughs> I mean, that's what you were going to do yes, anyway, so, yeah. okay. But you're just noting that you would right. like that included. I don't see any reason why not. Is that a motion? That is yes. a motion. There's a motion by Commissioner Cook, second by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor of the motion say aye, opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Thanks, John. Item H, Weed Department Number One, consider approval of request to award bids for the following weed control herbicides with the purchase of minimum quantities representing an expenditure of $108,107.76. A, Crop Production Services, Devlin for Torden, 20K, 22K at a cost of $45.68 a gallon. B, Crop Production Services for Remedy Ultra at a cost of $44.95 a gallon. C, Red River Specialties for some something I can't read at a cost of $14.31 a gallon. Uh, D, Red River Specialties for 2, 4D, a mine at a cost of $12.31 a gallon. And E, Tarwater Farm Supply for uh, aquatic, and that same word again, at a cost of $17.44 a gallon. Good Thank morning, you, Madam Clerk. What, what is it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, well, tell us. Glyphosate, glyphosate is also okay, known as Roundup. Yeah. Oh. Roundup. <laughs> 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 I would have said Roundup. <laughs> 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 All right, but we're, we're not actually major. purchasing Roundup. <laughs> uh, Roundup would be more expensive. We're getting the generic <laughs> version. So. Good morning, Commissioners. John Cabus from your Shawnee County Weed Department. Uh, these are the herbicides that are used uh, by our department uh, for controlling uh, weeds in the right of way and on contract work and the majority of them are for cost share to the public land owners of Shawnee County. So this is an expenditure that uh, is normal. We normally have this expenditure. One of the reasons why you're seeing it in the fall is that we had to rebid because through the summer prices had gone up. Uh, we're also um, wanting to increase our end of the year inventory. So. Okay. Thank you, John. Other questions? Motion to approve there the bids. Motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Motion. Item I, Commission Number One, consider resolution number 2013-187, allocating the 2014 Special Alcohol and Drug Program funds. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Jared Harson, current chair of the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Advisory Council of Shawnee County. Um, as requested by Commissioner Bueller and 
uh, financial administrator Betty Griner. We did reconvene the council on uh, November 21st uh, to uh, take a look at the what funds were um, available and um, what projections were available for the funding. And we did make amended recommendations and present them to the commission. Jared, how, how is the, uh, the council put together? Is it by I'm sorry, go ahead. How is the council put together? Who, who's represented on the council? Um, we have a number of different uh, community organizations and agencies as well as uh, many of them from um, uh, that are uh, treatment providers as well as uh, professionals in the field of substance abuse treatment, uh, some of them with uh, agencies with the state as well as um, hospitals, St. Francis, Strong Rock Vale, um, myself representing the 3rd Judicial District. Um, community Corrections, I believe. Dinah Pennington, former director of Community Corrections, is now a, a community representative in her uh, retirement on the council. Um, so we have a number of different folks that are um, um, representatives from the, the field of substance abuse as well as um, um, mental health um, and, say, community action, community organizations, and then the courts as well. Okay. So how often are those members appointed? Appointed? Mm -hmm. um, and how does that happen? Um, simply by uh, the, the commissioner or council or, uh, could, or city council could make a recommendation. Um, it simply a request to the council via um, a formal written letter. Um, and uh, we have um, a number of different, and most often folks from um, the uh, council or individuals such as yourselves will make a recommendation mm -hmm. and um, that will be brought before the council, which so, would be highly recommended if you'd sure, like to. Sure. Well, and I'm just wondering because I know we had some agencies that weren't funded. Correct. And, and so I've just been asked the question is, is how is the council put together? When are those appointments made? That sort of thing. So. Sure. Um, I can tell you that uh, I've been on the council since. Um, October of 2004, when at that time uh, Don Troth, our former court administrator, was a uh, member of the council for a long standing time and um, appointed myself to replace him. Um, uh, I would say that uh, it does, uh, membership does fluctuate. Uh, we have had uh, members of law enforcement for a long period of time. The sheriff's office uh, uh, had their community officer as a representative for a long period of time, but due to uh, staffing issues there, um, Though I believe they are very supportive of our of our council, they aren't able to attend the monthly meetings, et cetera. Um, so that we have lost that that in, input. But uh, um, but yes, we would welcome recommendations from the commission, city council, okay. And others. Okay. It's not a large amount. We're estimating fifty-eight thousand. Correct. correct. Um, I believe that was the. Uh, agreed upon estimate from the financial administrator um, and it, that was um, we tried to err on the side of caution I guess with that mm -hmm. looking at what the disperse, disbursements had been right. and then looking at what they possibly could be going into holidays and that sort of thing these this is a, um, a special alcohol tax um, yeah. as you all know but just explain that to folks that do not uh, have an understanding of the Liquor by the drink maybe is the more common term used in the legislature or um, publicly, I guess, over media. Okay. Might, that might be a better way to describe it for. for and, and this is the county's portion. Does the city also have a portion? Correct. And, and on Tuesday night, we did attend uh, the city council meeting, and their their uh, um, fund was six hundred thousand um, dollars. Obviously, the difference in, between the city and the county is, is uh, based on the number of establishments that are selling liquor in, in the county versus the city and um, as you all know that that is a much larger number of those yeah. establishments and so that number is obviously much much greater in the unincorporated areas of the county correct mm -hmm. granted the cities within the county yes I apologize but yeah, yeah. yeah. in the unincorporated areas okay thank you for okay. that clarification. our licenses in the county are 11 is that yeah I think it's close CMDs. to that yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. so the 11 
that would be the result of the fifty-eight thousand dollars is from those eleven. A portion of that. Yeah. Portion. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I can explain that as yeah. well if you'd like. That, that that is one third. That, uh, by the the statute, one third must go to. Um, I believe the Parks and Rec Fund, which mm -hmm. Mr. Knight has got, as well as one third to uh, treatment, prevention, education, as as uh, outlined, and then a third goes to the general fund. Right. Okay. okay. Thanks for answering all those questions. Sure. Appreciate it. Um, further questions? I motion to approve the resolution. So, motion to approve by Second. Commissioner Cook. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Those no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to all of you. I know there were several of you in the audience for being here this morning. We appreciate it. Item five, administrative communications. Um, I believe Stephanie had a report. While she's coming up to the podium, though, Tom Block wanted me to announce that on Saturday from 9 to noon, the house household hazardous waste facility is open. Good morning, Commissioner Stephanie Mott, Office Assistant in the County Commission Office. Um, I just want to make sure everybody knows that we are having a, a blood drive again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, the drive runs from 8 o'clock until about 1.15 is the last appointment slot. We have a lot of openings, mostly after 10 o'clock until 1 o'clock in that, in that area. So anybody can come. It doesn't have to be a county employee. Anybody can come if, if they're interested. Uh, if they want to let us know ahead of time, they can call me at 251-4040, um, and we're, we look forward to have a, a, a good crowd and a good turnout. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good morning, Commissioner Randy Luby, Parks and Recreation. I just wanted to touch on a few of the programs and events we have going on right now and what we'll be doing this Saturday. As most of you are aware, Winter Wonderland is up and running. Um, it runs through uh, December 31st, uh, great benefit for TARP. Um, Parks and Recreation uh, night is uh, Thursday, December 19th uh, from 6 to six to 10. It's a night that we volunteer to come out and um, uh, be the greeters, take the money, um, basically sell the razzle-dazzle glasses. Um, I, invite any of the other county employees yourself if you'd like to come out and volunteer that night you're all welcome uh, this saturday we have several events going on um, at our paris community center we have breakfast with santa uh, from 9 to 11. Uh, you can have your picture taken with santa it's six dollars per person to have breakfast under three is free um, we also have crestview community center have the old-fashioned christmas craft and bake sale there's, I believe, over 50 booths set up inside. Um, very, very popular event. Um, that runs from 9 to 3 p.m. Um, in Central Park, we have the 33rd Annual Karate Spectacular Tournament that is an open tournament for brown belts and below. That starts at 11. And then in the evening, we have the Polar Express at the Bell McKay Paris Community Center. It's a story time and reader comes out and uh, takes the kids magically journal or a journey through the um, to the North Pole basically so um, pretty much a typical Saturday um, mm -hmm. with Parks and Rec but just want to make that announcement Very good. Thank thanks you. Randy anyone else yes visual to remind everybody um, Mara Dingman from Holiday Park you okay. all saw us a few weeks ago November 7th when uh, John Knight brought forth um, the proposal for extending Holiday Park out to meet a historic garden circle that we've been going back and forth about for almost two years now and that um, proposal died for lack of a second um, it was proposed by um, Mr. Cook to reduce the budget and do part of the things, and one of those being to restore the circle, uh, which we've all been anxiously waiting for. And we just want to come back and readdress this. Um, we don't want it to go away. We want to know if this is what we're left with, which is basically this condition that you see at the bottom as it is today, and in which we've taken an activist approach and we have some signage around our neighborhood um, saying basically just fix it. This is what we want. Um, the idea of extending the park out to meet the circle was a great one and we were all 
um, <coughs> very approving of that over time and many discussions on this topic, including having it taken to the Landmarks Commission for the, for the city and having them approve uh, of the plan that was proposed. However, we continue to sit with kind of a football of a piece of ground left behind with sandbags. It's almost two years now <laughs> since we started with this and we're, we're just getting frustrated and we want to hope and know that something is going to be done about this going forward. Um, just very quickly to say, we've had some uh, private discussions with folks who we knew were kind of sitting back with some materials for us, one of those being Ron Rains in the city has a, a, a bank of um, limestone curbing, which is similar to what we have in our neighborhood, and it matches, and there's enough of it to uh, go around the existing circle, and he has most of the dirt um, to at least take that first step to put the circle back and to say we care, <laughs> to say something's coming, um, and we just want to re-approach this issue because as it is, we just feel like it's been dropped and we're just all getting kind of tired of waiting. So, and also to reestablish the idea that it is a garden circle. Um, it's been there since 1895. We are the fourth public park in Topeka. We feel like that should mean something. We have a namesake of the founder of Topeka. Um, we've all put our time and efforts. Private public dollars have gone into this area over time and we just want to know that something positive is going to happen soon. I want to make any <coughs> covered it all. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioners. I, I would also add that I've also spoke with Councilwoman Hiller. Um, she has also indicated that the city, and those were discussions that we had very early on, the city has set aside uh, limestone curbing from other projects when they were redoing curbing and sidewalks. So there is curbing <coughs> that will be able to be utilized, as well as there's dirt that is being set aside by the city. <coughs> and there was a memorandum letter between the county commissioner or the county counselor's office and the city manager at least for that part of the project and so I know that when Mr. Knight presented the proposal before those items were not I mean, included as part of the proposal for the 50 57,000 and so that does will have an impact on the cost of the project and, and just to say too we're we are um, we respect all the individuals including John and Bill Riffon and, and Terry Bertles and all these folks we've been working with over time, Kevin and Karen and all this, these uh, really face-to-face -face discussions for the last year, but we are coming up on the anniversary of the hitting of the circle by a policeman and another fella who were unfortunately involved in some kind of a criminal car chase, and we feel like the whole issue has been branded to that, that it was this terrible, um, you know, uh, scary thing that keeps getting hit by cars when in reality over time that's just not true. Um, what it was for a number of years was just circled with landscaping stones that were very easily knocked down. You wouldn't have to hit it hard or maybe somebody might even pull them out, kids or something, and it just gave this effect or this feeling that we had some horrible problem when in reality that just wasn't true. It does need to come down, we feel, and not be quite as tall and have it curbed. It has been set back already, uh, 10 feet I believe. So we're just ready to, to take it to the next step. It's the entrance to our neighborhood and we, we want it back and we're saying in a very respectful way we're, we're fighting for it. So, anyway. Any other comments? Thank you. Thank you. Did you have something, John? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning again, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. Uh, as you guys are uh, uh, well aware, uh, Parks and Recreation has had uh, some significant budget cuts going into the next year. One of the reductions we're looking at is the Ford's golf course. and. Uh, I want to make sure the commissioners uh, understand that that's not our property out there where the Forbes Golf Course sits. It's federal property that is uh, uh, basically on lease to Shawnee County. Uh, we're restricted by what uses we can do and can't do at the Forbes Golf Course um, by a program of utilization. Um, uh, and so we'll have to amend that. And one way to go about going forward to do that would be to hold three public meetings. 
Uh, it is my suggestion, and I'd like to make that announcement here today if the commission is okay with that, that we hold one at the Velma K Parish Community Center on December the 12th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, which uh, Velma K Parish Communi Community Center is right across the street from the Ford's Golf Course. Uh, on December 18th, I would hold, like to hold a public hearing at the uh, Shawnee County Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Um, that, that would give, uh, and that begins at 5.30, and that is held at City Hall at the uh, City Council Chambers. And then the next day at 9 o'clock in the morning, I'd like to use this meeting as a public hearing as well. Uh, uh, that would suffice the National Park Service's guidelines, which is to, they would like to have public input on any kind of amendment to the POU going forward. Uh, be happy to answer any other questions or make alternative plans, but I think that's the best way going <coughs> forward if we don't use Forbes Golf Course as a golf course. Sure. Yes, sir. John, I know that I've been approached by a number of people who've had different ideas of the ways to improve Forbes or the way to change Forbes, and everybody, I'm sure, has an opinion as to what to do with Forbes. In every, in every foursome, there are two golf course superintendents and two golf pros in every foursome that plays at a golf course. And so would these public hearings be the ideal op I mean, venue for if anybody has an idea as to how to improve Forbes, how to keep it within the operation of Shawnee County that we may not have considered? Yes, these would be the, the perfect time for those type of things. Okay. So you'll make the necessary I'll, arrangements I'll, uh, and uh, set those three uh, times. Hearing no concerns from these commissioners, I'll send out press releases and make sure to try to get as much uh, Do you have to have them. official action by this body to set those public hearings? I don't believe so. No? no? Okay. But you have to have public hearings. That is go ahead and do a motion. Could, could I ask <coughs> if maybe he could uh, put a, something on the agenda, on a consent agenda, just so we have a, um, a record. record of when it's okay. actually going to be? Yeah. This is... Jim Crow, Assistant County Counselor. The recommendation for these public hearings comes from our contact with the Federal Park Service. Right. It's not a hard and fast <coughs> but it's just a contractual provision or federal requirement. It is a suggestion, and um, he is the individual we will be working with. Mm -hmm. If there is an amendment to the program of utilization, he will be one of the principal parties deciding whether that amendment would be approved. Okay. So. Okay. It, it seemed to be prudent to follow his suggestion to sure. have these public meetings. Sure. If you could just go ahead and do a memo so and send so it across just, consent. Yeah, send it to that. And, and I'll make it an, an agenda items. item as well. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Right. Anyone else for administrative communications? Uh, next item, please. Item 6, executive session. I do not believe there's a need. If not, we are adjourned. <laughs>